Today's mug up Monday is gonna be in my backyard with a Tim Hortons coffee. The reason for that is Irving um, decided they were just gonna level the forest where I do a lot of my filming. And you know that spruce patch that I'm always in? It's gone, it's gone now. We went away for the weekend and uh, went a little, did a little bit of camping, came back and they get a whole bunch of it just leveled out, so. Lots of equipment over there. I'm gonna stay away from there for now. And we'll just do it here in the backyard. We'll do what we can do. Back in 2008, a team of Egyptians, uh, they were Egyptian environmentalists. Uh, they were out and they found a fossil. And the fossil that they found is that of a prehistoric semi-aquatic whale. I didn't know this, this is new to me too, but uh, I thought whales kind of uh, evolved in the ocean, but that's not the case. We're talking like over 10 million years ago. But apparently these animals, they did dwell on the land, or at least they were semi-aquatic before they decided to go full aquatic and become what we know of today as modern whales. But those whales, they had like legs. That's what made them semi-aquatic. They were able to come on land, they were able to go back in the water and swim. Uh, the same as like seals or, or uh, walruses, things like that, right? They found the fossils of this in the Egyptian Western Desert, which this particular area is called Whale Alley. It's known for these type of things. But this particular fossil was an unknown species the transition to what we know of today as modern whales was about 10 million years ago. But these whales are dated back to over uh, 50 million years ago. And the whales that we know today, actually scientists believe they originated from what is today known as modern Pakistan and India. That's information I didn't know. I, I wasn't aware of that. I thought that, you know, the, the way the evolutional uh, chain goes that we came from the ocean, I figured, hey, whales just stuck around in the ocean, never bothered coming on land. But apparently they, they tested the tested. I don't want to say tested the waters because it's quite the opposite. They tested the land, and then they were like, "Nah, that's not for us, bro. We're gonna go back to the ocean." So they jumped back in and lost their arms, and now they have just little flippers and a big tail. Oh, look what I just found! Check that little guy out. He's hiding under a piece of board in here with the chickens. Pretty cool. I'll put him outside somewhere. Cause he's gonna get eaten in here. Make sure there's no more. Whoa, look at the earthworms. <coughs> Paleontologists unearthed a uh, arthropod in the Kootenai National Forest here in the Rocky Mountains of Canada. What's interesting is this arthropod this arthropod is um, about two, over two feet long, which is amazing for the era where it came from and for what it is. Back then, all the arthropods that they found that have been carbon dated back uh, to, to that era were only centimeters in length, if that. They were very tiny, but this one was huge with a, with a helmet basically over its head, an exoskeleton over its head like a shell. They had these little spiny legs where they kind of move across the ocean floor similar to that of like a Roomba or one of those little vacuums, those robotic vacuums, um, where they just kind of got those little bristles that move around. That's kind of what they did. They went across the ocean floor and sandy bottoms like that looking for food. Now the name, the name of this creature, what they've dubbed it is Titanus Chorus Gainsey. That's what they've called it. We'll leave it at that. I don't even know what it means. The great thing about these creatures. These creatures would have lived between 541 million years ago to 40 million years ago. Just a small gap period is called the Cambrian period which uh, is when uh, there was an explosion of animals such as this along with other animals like mussels and clams and like the the, the well the, the predecessors to those too right uh, scientists actually found a blue jay uh, blue jay size bird with tail feathers that are exceptionally long for the size of its body and for its era 
tail feathers for this blue jay sized bird was about 12 inches long and resembled uh, a lot of the day sunbird and sunbirds use their tail feathers to attract mates and they think that this particular bird was doing the same thing that long ago and it was just for flashiness it was just because it, it wasn't practical to have tail feathers that long it didn't aid with flying or anything like that so they just think it was just there for looks like a lot of other birds they like to be pretty like peacocks and all these things they have these big long elaborate tail feathers even though they don't offer a whole lot outside just you know the dating scene a lot of people might think well, why would these birds have elaborate tail feathers even back then why would they have elaborate tail feathers if it's going to give them a handicap and it's going to make it harder for them to evade predators and uh, you know it's like playing tag while you have a rope tied around you like it just makes it easier for things to catch you well if an animal has tail feathers that long and elaborate and colorful and it doesn't get caught it's really good at what it does which means it's going to be one of the stronger of its species so a bird that has a long tail feather and is looking for a mate but that tail feather is slowing it down too much it will get caught and it'll die the ones that don't get caught they stay the stronger so then they'll continue to mate their genes get passed on so the young then will be a little bit faster a little more agile than even the parents and then the strong genes get passed on and this was found in northeast china and scientists called this bird one chavis after the um the the phoenix bird from uh, chinese mythology so it's quite fitting because it kind of does look like a phoenix well thank you guys for watching this mug up monday i do appreciate it sorry this one was a little quicker Although the format for my Mug Up Mondays are going to start to change. I'm going to do three topics instead of four now. Just because I'm trying to keep the time of these little things down. Um, just makes it easier for people to get the quick watches in. Because I know a lot of people like to watch these in the morning when they're having their coffee. And before they get up and, and head on with their day on uh, Monday. And that's why I release them so early in the morning as well. So people can enjoy them before they take off to work. And just learn a couple uh, random facts for the day. Just some interesting stuff. And as always, I thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Nailed it. Oh, it's a mesh hat. You can see through it anyway. Hey, guys.